Hello, welcome back. And today we are carrying on with the Learn to Cross Stitch series. So today I just wanted to do a little Q&A to answer some of the questions to make sure I've not missed anything out and I've left you hanging thinking, well, I don't know what I'm doing. So luckily there hasn't been a lot of questions. So I'm hoping that that means that everyone's getting on really well. I'll show you how far I have got with mine. So I've really enjoyed doing this one and I've been loving the colours. So that is how far I am. So the next video will be doing the back stitch. Once I've finished all the cross stitch, then I'll do the next video and we'll start doing the back stitch. Don't worry if you haven't got this far, it's not a race. These videos will always be here. So just go at your own pace and just know that when you get to the next step, it'll be ready for you. So I've just been doing the cross stitch on here. So I shall go to the questions and answer some of your questions. So the first question is Gail, hello Gail, and she has asked, do I always start in the middle? And yes, generally I do. It is very rare that I will start in a corner. If I'm really confident that I've got enough fabric, or when I started doing a haid, which is a full coverage piece, then you, I would maybe start in the corner because that is page by page. There's lots of pages for that sort of chart. So you're best off starting with page one. So that would be a corner start. So I would just be really careful that I'd measured my fabric and I had the right amount of fabric and I was starting in the right place. So, but generally if it's a small design like this or most of the designs because I don't really do the haids now I found out that it's not really my type the big full coverage pieces aren't really for me so I'm going more for the middle size pieces really and the smaller pieces so I find that the best thing for me is to start right in the centre generally I like to do the pretty ladies so I'll show you something like this so I'll start in the centre generally and then I usually go up because if it's a lady then I like to give her a face. <laughs> some people will work their way down, some people out, there's no rule, it doesn't matter which direction you go in but I just find that it is just for centering really just so you're sure because you spend a lot of time on it and it's really horrible to start playing fabric chicken basically and think have I got enough fabric and yeah it just takes the enjoyment away. If you find that you are very close to the edge then you can always add fabric on for framing but obviously you need to have the amount of fabric to actually stitch on as long as you've got some spare. Generally I try and have three inches for a project this size. So a big project like that I would just I would generally go three inches each side so the measurement across would be six inches larger than the actual project so that would give me plenty of room for framing as a general rule. <laughs> I'll also ask do I count the number of boxes? I take it that means she's meaning the small boxes because there's two types of boxes so you've got the small boxes so you've got 10 by 10 makes a larger box so I count the smaller boxes because obviously that's the stitches so I count those so I know where I am. Um, if you wanted to go further cross country so if I was stitching here and I had I'd used sorry you can't see me <laughs> if I was stitching here and I'd come to the end of what I needed to stitch in that colour but I still had some thread left but there was more of that colour over here then I can count across and start in a space but if you're going to do that you need to be really careful with your counting so I generally I don't like to go too far away so I like to join it up with something but you can go just count across how many spaces to where you want to go and start in the middle of somewhere. What you do need to Bear in mind though that if you're going to carry that thread behind you have to be really careful because sometimes you can see behind it so it's best to finish off and then start a new thread rather than carrying too much. I do carry quite a lot I'll be honest I'm not a perfectionist and so I will carry but if I had something like black 
or darker red or something I would be aware of what I can get away with and what I can't because you don't want to see that thread at the back when you frame it because that is what your eyes are always going to be drawn to when you've finished it. Next question is from Tara and she's asked about the fancy floss and also the hand dyed fabric. The fancy floss I generally just my first port of call in the UK is to go to so and so they don't have many fancy flosses though so even though they have the charts that need them they don't always have the floss so what I generally do after that is just do a Google search in the UK I generally don't buy from America because I'm worried about the tax that's going to be added on that's where the best place is, is to buy things but you can get them in the UK just do a Google search and you'll find them as for the hand dyed fabric my favourite companies are Sparklies, Chromatic Alchemy and Pole Stitches. I shall put links down below for those. All three of those do lovely fabric. So what we mean by the hand dyed fabric is where it's mottled. So it's been over dyed. So you get mottling. So you can have just, this one's just different blues, but then you can have ones with all different colours. And so you can choose whatever you want to go with your design so this one has got a sparkly so you can have I don't know if you can see the sparkles but you can have sparkly fabric as well which is quite nice for different designs especially like the fairies and the fantasy ones are quite nice to have like that if you're wondering about the fancy flosses what they are it just means this is quite a good example it's got quite a few this band down here it has it goes from one colour to another so and where you see this blue here all that blue and green inside is one thread so it just changes colour on its own so that's what the fancy floss does and it's also silk the Karen Waterlies is also silk whereas the DMC normal cottons are cotton <laughs> but then you get the silks which are a finer nicer thread so if you're just starting out, I would recommend you just use the ones that are recommended for it and then you'll get to know what you like and then if you want to order different colours you can do that. If you're in the US then you're lucky that you can go into your local needle workshop and see them all and fill them all but unfortunately in the UK we just don't have the shops that stock them so it's very hard. I live in the middle of nowhere so there's nowhere for me to go where I can actually see them and feel them and try them out so I have to buy online so I generally just buy what's called for for the chart that I'm using at the time I've also been asked where to buy needle binders from we made my own needle minders and I've been gifted <laughs> I've been gifted needle minders this is one I bought at the stitch retreat by Denkai and so I'll put hers below because she does lovely needle minders in the UK. You can find needle minders on Etsy as well if you just go to Etsy and put needle minders. So if you don't know what a needle minder is, it's literally something you put on your work and it's a magnet. So you have a magnet on the back of the decorative piece and then you have a magnet that goes the other side of the fabric and literally it goes between the fabric so if I show on this so you put your needle minder on the front and then your magnet would go on the back to hold it and then oh I've got some thread hanging then literally how it works is you have your needle and you just let it go and it holds on to the needle for you and that just holds onto it rather than putting it in the fabric. So that's what that does. So I shall put Denkai's details down below if you want to check out some needle minders. When I've made needle minds myself, this is one that I've made. It's literally just one of a pair of earrings from the pound shop that I thought was really nice but not really something I want to wear. <laughs> So this one literally cost me 50p, so I've just stuck a magnet on the back with E6000 and then I've got a magnet on a button and that's all there is to it. So you can make your own quite easily with old jewellery, brooches or anything decorative that you like.
It is worth remembering if you buy the magnets to go for the silver ones rather than the black ones because the black ones could actually mark your fabric so it's something to be aware of. Another question from Judy and she has asked do I finish one colour first before going on to another? I generally do a length of thread and then decide so if there's still a lot of that colour I might do the same as that one. If I fancy doing a different colour to join it up to build it up because I like to build up the picture that really motivates me seeing the picture growing. I know some people who will do the whole of the chart in one colour and then do the next colour all in but I don't I don't like that. <laughs> it's personal preference but you just don't for me you don't see the picture and so it just looks like a ra random until getting on close to the edge whereas I like I did the toucan first so that I could see him and then I'm doing individual flowers so I can appreciate the flowers so there is no hard and fast rule you, whichever way feels right for you is the way to do it. Judy also asked if I stay in the same area and I do generally I like to join it up so I, I do skip backwards and forwards um, if I just want to see how something's like the leaves, I think I started doing those before I'd actually finished the yellow flower because I wanted to see how they would look next to the flower. So yeah, you just have fun with it. And that's the thing, this is a hobby to have fun with. It's not, don't take it too seriously. It's time to just do what you fancy. Don't think, oh, I need to finish this flower before I start on the leaves. No, if you, if you want to start doing the leaves, then start doing the leaves. So nobody's going to say, oh, you've done it in the wrong order. Just have fun with it. I also wanted to mention that I realised I did and I didn't speak about in the last video. Is sometimes when you're stitching, you've been stitching on one length and you're about halfway through, the thread can be twisted. So generally what you would do is when you've gone through, you just let it hang. So you'd have the thread with the needle attached and just hold it up and it will unwind because what you might find is as you stitch, especially later on, because I asked you to do quite a short length, you can do longer lengths than I said about, but I didn't want you to start getting tangled up, so that's why I said about a manageable length. But later on, especially if you have a longer length, you might find that it starts twisting. And with the twist, it means it's not so fluffy. And so you'll see it's tighter actually on your stitches, on your work. So what is a good idea to do now and again is just to let that thread just hang with your needle on and that will just unwind and just come back to normal. You don't have to do anything. The needle should stay on. It's not going to be coming off. Mine generally stays on. And so, yeah, and then kids carry on stitching, but it just makes the stitches a bit nicer, just keeps them plumper rather than being twisted and tighter. Okay, so what if you've gone wrong? You've realised you've gone wrong. How do you do deal with that? So very easily, and I'm sure you've had to do this already, is literally just put your needle underneath pull it up and that stitch will come out and just go back as far as you need to go until you're right again. Just thread your needle back up and carry on. If you feel, if you find, say when I come up here, back to do, back to put in stitches here, if I've found that it's not right and so I should unpick it but it's in the middle of something and so I don't want to. If you're a perfectionist, take it back so it's right if it's going to bug you. If you can fudge it, fudge it. <laughs> so if it looks right when you've stitched it, if it's going to look right. So if it is like these flowers and you've got a stitch in the wrong place, it's really probably not going to make a lot of difference and nobody's going to notice. In nature, it's not a set pattern. If something's a set pattern, you're going to notice it. If it's not a set pattern and it looks okay, then leave it in. Don't worry about it. But if it is going to bug you, 
change it because there's nothing worse than having something you've finished you framed it and every time you look at it you see the mistake <laughs> but generally I'm somebody who will fudge and I know a lot of people that do stitching say you're just personalizing it or well, personalization so yours is a little bit different to everybody else's because we don't want to be the same so you've just changed it to your style that's how we like to think of it but as I said, if it is a set pattern and so it throws the pattern out, then please take it back because it's not going to make you happy at the end of it. So in that case, it's worth taking back. But the last thing I was going to do, I've had questions about how I stitch Q-snaps, snap frames that I use rather than the hoops. And so asking how I use them and rhyme guards we use over them. So I thought I'd just go through to show you what I use so when you move on to other things if you wanted to give that a try you could so just to demystify so if you start watching floss tube cross stitch videos and you wanted to know what people are talking about hopefully this will make it clear this is how I stitch so you see that my frame is being held and that's a Lowry stand that I use to hold so I can actually stitch two-handed I have one hand at the front one hand at the back I have got a light here with a magnifier so that can just help me see better as I'm no spring chicken. <laughs> so that is to help me if I need it there. It's always good to have a good daylight bulb if you are working on cross stitch and it helps you just see the colors properly, see what colors they are because the normal yellow lighting can be distorted into different colors. I generally like, I should move you a bit forward. I generally attach my pattern onto the frame so that I find it easier to actually see right close to where I'm working and I just hold it on with my needle minder there. I also always put, because I use coloured pencils to colour it in, I have something behind it. I did the chart like on this one and I've already used the other side. It can actually transfer the pencil so it's always best to put something behind to make sure it's not going to mark your work underneath when you're colouring that in. On the outside of the frame there is the fabric, this here. This is called a grime guard. I made this one, I generally make mine, but you can buy them on Etsy and probably eBay. Lots of different people make the grime guards, but there are really good tutorials on YouTube if you wanted to make your own, if you're handy with a sewing machine take this off the frame and sort of deconstruct it so you can see actually how it's made up and how you actually put it into the frame okay so here it is so first of all I take off the needle minder and then we have the grime guard so I'll take that up so as you can see it's just elasticated so it's like a big garter really <laughs> and that just means that you keep when you, if you are holding it in hand especially you're not going to be holding on and all the oils from your hand going onto your fabric so it just keeps it nice and clean and especially because I take mine on holiday so it's in a hot country so you sweat you've got suntan lotion so it just keeps it nice and clean especially with the hand dyed fabric because you can't wash the hand dyed fabric so there you can see the frame this is a type of Q-snap, Q-snap is an actual make this is called a snap frame but in the US they have Q-snaps which are supposed to so I shall take off those side edges So you'll see I've got felt underneath, this is to protect the fabric and just keep those sides nice and tight. And then under there, that is the frame, the bare bones basically. <laughs> so yeah, literally to make it up is you lay your fabric on top, put your felt on, snap on your sides. Go to the other side, pull it across, snap it on, 
and then all you do to actually tighten it up I can do it in, is twist round and as you twist round that goes straight and then you just do that to the other sides and that's all there is to this snap frame really so thank you for joining me I hope you found this interesting and I hope you're getting on really well with your cross stitch and I'll see you again in the next video where we'll be doing some back stitching take care bye for now